This is an interesting one. Kind of builds on some discussions we've had about price demand. Here's the example. A company makes and sells X cameras per week. The price demand function is P equals 400 minus 0.5X. Uh, we dealt with price demand functions back with in elasticity of demand. Although when we did elasticity, elasticity of demand, it was always X equals something with P, right? Like, like F of P is what we called it. Here we've got it reversed. We've got it solved for P. Well, it's still a price demand function, but here we're kind of switching things up. So we're told how many cameras they make and sell, and that will determine our price. So if we want to make 100 cameras, then we know what price to charge, you know, sort of thing. Okay, so we haven't actually gotten to the question yet. Uh, what is the maximum revenue? Okay, wow, where did that come from? Maximum revenue. All right, well, obviously, um, you know, we might adjust how many cameras we make. That's going to change the price, which changes the revenue, right? So there's like a sweet spot. So if we don't make enough cameras, obviously we can't sell enough. We can't bring enough money in. But if we make too many cameras, then we're really driving down the price, you know, the way this is set up. Uh, since we're subtracting, we make too many cameras, then our price is going to drop down uh, too low, and we're not going to uh, be able to be able to sell, right? So we we have to we have to drop the price in order to sell all the cameras, right? The idea is um, every camera we make, we also want to make sure that we sell. We want zero surplus. So if we make a lot of cameras, we got to drop that price to make sure we sell them all. So there's a sweet spot in the middle. What is the maximum revenue? Okay, so we need to know how to find the revenue function, right? And it's it's something that um, you're just going to be expected. It's not going to be, you know, said explicitly. Revenue equals the number of cameras that you sell times the price you charge. Okay, and it's pretty simple when you see it. But all right, how many cameras am, am I going to make and sell? Because I'm going to sell all of them multiplied by the price that I charge per camera, obviously, right? Okay, this is great. So it's like here, I've got my revenue function in two variables, but I need my revenue to only be in terms of a single variable, x. Fortunately, I already know what p equals, so I'm just going to take that and plug it right in. And this is in a sense simpler than the previous example where we had to come up with you know in that example we had to come up with both these equations on our own um, and then realize the substitution so it's still got that element we're still substituting that in but it's kind of already set up for us it's pretty pretty nice okay so we've got the revenue in terms of only x pretty cool and we're just going to go ahead and simplify that because we know we're about to take a derivative. 400x minus 0.5x squared. So the last thing we need before we start looking for the absolute max, we want to know, of course, what interval of x. What is the largest value that x can take? What is the smallest value that x can take? Okay, what's key here? is noticing two things. Uh, remember what X and P stand for, right? X is the number of cameras that we produce. So we know that the number of cameras we produce is going to be at least zero. <laughs> um, probably even zero itself seems like a bad choice, um, but it is possible to produce zero cameras. But it's not possible to produce negative cameras. All right. So we know x is greater than or equal to 0. So that's the least that it can be. Also, the price that we charge is going to be at least 0. I guess in theory you could charge $0. So that's the minimum. We're probably going to charge something more than that. Okay, so, so this gives us the smallest value of x. 
How is this helpful? Okay. Because we know what the price equals, right? So they, they told us that in the beginning, so we're going to take advantage of that again. 400 minus 0.5x has got to be greater than or equal to 0. Turns out this is going to give us the maximum value that x can take. Because if we produce too many cameras, then in theory our price will go negative in order to sell them all. Okay, so we're going to we're going to solve this thing for x and it's going to give us the biggest value. So, well, if I add that over there and I divide by 0.5 then I know 800 is greater than or equal to x. In other words, x is less than or equal to 800. I know that x has got to be somewhere between 0 and 800. I have to at least make 0 cameras, and I can't charge more than 800 or else my price goes negative. Okay. So that's, that, that's, that's kind of tricky, maybe that's maybe, especially this one. But now that we've done one together, you know how to, to go about it. Okay, so... The number of cameras we produce is going to be somewhere between 0 and 800. 0 to 800, there you go. Uh, looks like I kept going on the next page. Here is what we know so far. We've got our revenue function on that interval. We're looking to maximize revenue, biggest revenue possible. It's all set up now. So once we have our function, we have the interval. We just got to remember the steps to finding the absolute max. In this case, uh, it begins with the criticals. We want the derivative. Pretty straightforward derivative here, 400 minus x. We want to know when that derivative equals 0. And if that derivative ever does not exist. Well, don't think there's much to say here. x equals 400, and there's never a time when it doesn't exist. So, okay, we've got one critical, and we've got our endpoints. We're going to take our critical, put it into the original revenue. We're going to take both endpoints, put that into the original revenue, and see what we get. I haven't done this yet. 400 times 400 minus 0.5 times 400 squared. I got 80,000. If the revenue is zero, zero, excuse me, if x is zero, then our revenue is zero. Well, yeah, you don't sell any cameras. If we, even if we sell 800 cameras, we're not going to make any money either, because in order to uh, get all those out the door, in theory, we have to charge zero dollars. So that revenue is going to be zero as well. Well, so we can look and say, okay, there's the max revenue right there. $80,000. And we just about got it. We just got to make sure that we answer the original question. What was the original question? Let me go back. What is the maximum revenue? Oh, okay, great. <laughs> it's 80000 <laughs> For some reason I was thinking like how many cameras do you need to produce the maximum revenue but 400 cameras and granted you sell them all okay now there's a follow up to this one part B make this one a little more interesting what price <clears throat> will result in maximum revenue ooh okay so we know how many cameras we should produce. It was 400. What does that mean for the price? What price? What are we going to set the price at? That's important. We need to know how many cameras to produce, and we need to know what to set the price at. Well, if you remember, okay, x equals 400. We knew that. And we know that the price is 400 minus 0.5 times x. So all we got to do is put that right on in there, and we know the price. We're going to set that price at $200 per camera. So if we sell 400 cameras and they're all at $200 a piece, we're going to be uh, making a, a nice revenue of 80000 
what we did not consider in this question was the cost, right? There's probably some kind of a cost to produce those 400 cameras. But that wasn't in the nature of the question. We're going to see something like that later. We're going to talk about profit in a different example. I think that's going to do it for this video. See you in part three.